All right, we're here at our round table. This is where we get we get deep, and, and this is a lot to soak in. The other day, I was ranking my favorite seasons in the MLB Network era. I think 2022 is number one, just because of the history. Really, really, no joke. 2011, okay, probably year. number two. Uh, Cubs winning the World Series, probably in the mix as well. But anyway, I want to get to a bunch of different topics, if you don't mind, and we're going to fly through these. First topic: your favorite preseason storyline. What was it before opening day? Oh, that was Buck Showalter going back to the Mets. I mean, it was not a perfect fit, and we got it right in baseball. So often you go, oh, they don't get it right. They finally got this thing right. There's his wife, Angela. They're, they have been just so great for the organization. And redoing this, I thought the Coens made an excellent choice. Steven, Alex, to pick these two, bring them on, and, and Buck is running the ship. I mean, to me, that's the... Easiest, best move of the winter for me. Uh, for me, two words, all rise. Aaron Judge bet on himself early, walked away from an over $200 million extension on a contract, bet on himself, could have gone the wrong way, had a historic season, 62 home runs, carried the Yankees to the pennant, and I thought he had a miraculous year. He'll be the AL MVP. I love General Hospital, uh, Day of Our Lives. Um, this was a soap opera. Freddie Freeman, Matt Olson, you win a World Series and they discard you for another first baseman who's left-handed? Are you kidding me? You would go game? for the drama. Oh, my goodness. I couldn't get enough of that. The Freeman Olsen storyline. Well, you had Freddie at spring training. Like, at his when press it was, conference. It was, like, real. And he was crying and talking about yeah. how much he's going to miss Atlanta. It was intense. All right. This, was, this one's a tough one. Okay. Who was robbed of a special season? Give me a player that we should have been talking about on this last day of the regular season, but because of injury or something, was robbed of a great year. Bryce Harper. Without a doubt. I mean, he's coming off an MVP. He's got a team, obviously, that's a playoff team, which they proved. And he was rolling in the heart of things. Then when he got hit by that pitch right there off Blake Snell and broke his hand, he, he worked his way back. We're just starting to see Bryce Harper come all the way back around. That's why he was so frustrated, because he was having an amazing year on way to back-to-back -back MVPs. I'm telling you, he was in the hunt. No doubt about it. Well, for me, it could be what could have been for Walker Bueller. Dodgers having a magical year, another 100-plus win season. Uh, they've been in control of this NL West, it seems like, forever now. Swing and miss plays in the month of October. Big part of what the Dodgers have done the last couple of years. Some issues with his elbow. Could have been a great year for Walker Bueller. Mickey Moniak was sitting over 350 going into the last spring training game before opening day. Mm. He got hit by a pitch, broke his hand. He eventually got traded from the Philadelphia Phillies to the Angels. It was finally time for Mickey Moniak, the former number one pick, to thrive. He was tearing the cover off the ball in spring training. I felt so bad for that kid. Oh, then it got hit again out in Anna. Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, um, it's rough year we get me. a lot of things right, and we'll get into that in a second. We do. We make a lot of great predictions. But we also sometimes mess up when we get things wrong. Mm. So let's dive into that. In the regular okay. season, Harold, what did you get wrong this year? Uh, Julio Rodriguez uh, should be sent down to the minors when he was scuffling in April. But he turned it all the way around. You know how well he turned it around? He turned it around to the point he got a 16-year contract. <laughs> that's how much he turned it around. Oh, that's how wrong maybe, you were. Well, maybe the greatest turnaround in the history of our sport. Think about it. Hey, he scuffled early. Go ahead, Dan. Albert Pujols, I was on record early on. Greg, we did our preseason show. One of our, our pronosticators, that's what I am. I was dead wrong. I didn't know if Albert would get enough of bats. You not only said he would get it, you said the day he was going to get it <laughs> against the team that he was going to get it. Kudos to you. You were right. I was wrong. I have to take it. I'm not right all the time. Uh, my wife will tell you that. Um, I was wrong here. I predicted that Robinson Cano was going to be the comeback player of the year. And so many teams agreed with me because they came <laughs> to, <laughs> to come over back. And over. It just didn't happen for my guy Robinson Cano. All right, uh, the the whole pool holes prediction got a lot of run. It it, it did. It really did. Bit. Aside from the Albert Pools 700 prediction that I, I I landed perfectly almost. What did we get right? What did you actually get right? this year the first time I saw O'Neill Cruz was in winter ball and it was in the winter there in hot stove and I said this guy's a star then I got a chance to see him in New York I got this right folks six seven shortstop uh, he's going to be a special special talent got a long way to go but it's all right there man got that right 
I, I never jumped off the ship, and I jump. I'm on and off teams like anybody you can believe. Philadelphia Phillies like the lineup. I think their starting rotation, Aaron Nola, doesn't get enough credit. Zach Wheeler back healthy right now. Noah Syndergaard chipped in. He pitched well down the stretch. This is a team that has a big time run at them, and they're going to give the Cardinals all they can handle coming up this weekend. So many of our experts said you can't move an outfield wall back 25 feet. It looks ugly. Camden Yards doesn't look as pretty as it used. It like jets out. That's terrible. I don't want to hit there. Their home record went up dramatically. They almost made the playoffs. I said that before the season started. Try something different. Your pitchers can't get anybody out. They can't keep the ball in the yard. It worked. Their ERA went down dramatically. I got that right. Okay. I'll give you that. I did. The most disappointing moment in, in, in a season, like you said earlier, baseball is, is a, a sport of failure. So there's a lot of disappointment. What was the most disappointing moment for you this year? Uh, it had to be Fernando Tatis getting popped for PEDs. You know, it just, because he was so revered in the sport, and I still think the future is so bright around this kid, and I just love him, spending time around him. Me too. Uh, it was just, it just hurt. And so that was the biggest disappointment for me. Hopefully he turns this whole thing around and we get back to see him playing. Josh Hader, a big part of the Milwaukee Brewers. The only thing good about this is, my, my career save record is still intact, so oh. <laughs> that I'm thankful for. But I, I just thought this sent ripples through that Milwaukee clubhouse. I don't think they ever recover from it. I understand he wasn't great with the Padres, but it messed up the mojo in that bullpen. What's disappointing about this? How about not catching home run number 61? <laughs> <laughs> the reaction says it all. Now you get to be on Jimmy Kimmel and other late night shows, but my man disappointed. He didn't catch home run number 61. Baseball can be weird, man. You do a show every night, you'll see something you've never seen before. <laughs> so with that said, the spirit of that topic, what's the oddest moment of the season? The oddest thing that you Well, saw? this one hurts because you're getting hit by a baseball. The Mets, as often as they got hit by pitches, yes, it's a brand new record, and they it, it's hard to even conceive that they got hit as many times as they did to set a new major league record. Well over 100 times they were hit by a pitch, and Buck Showalter hated every single one. Every of them. one of them. Richard Blyer, talk about <laughs> the strange, the what in the world happened. Three balks in one inning. Balked in a run. First balk, he was like, okay, what did I do? The second balk was like, are you kidding me? The third one, he's like, wait a second. Now this is balk number three, and right here he's like, I've had enough. I don't know what to do anymore. Downey baseball came out crazy night. Uh, was that as odd as this? Dan, you were in a hole. <laughs> Cold and damp down there in that <laughs> hole, too. Not a fun place to be. And then you tried to throw me some reinforcements down there, right? Oh, that was so funny. It was hard to be down there without my cell phone, too. I couldn't take any cell I know, phones. I know. But you had your, your rations. You had everything you needed. I did. There. In I the did. hole. Down in a hole that for some reason. Good. That was We're recapping good. this 2022 season. Uh, we always have moments on and off the field that you just never forget that stick with you. Is there a moment to you that you'll look back and it'll be towards the top of the list of your favorite moment? Well, it was, it was, yeah, a lot. It was Jackie Robinson because of the fact that it was 75 years for Jackie breaking the color barrier and it was Rachel's 100. So we did a special. First, we started out in Times Square that day. So that was really cool in the middle of New York City. But I started this special that aired. I started going around the country in January. I got a chance to spend time with President Bill Clinton. I spoke with President George Bush. I got a chance to Bo Jackson. I interviewed Spike Lee. I went out and saw Commissioner Bud Selig, and he told stories about all kinds of things. That was really one of the highlights of my TV career so far, to travel around and talk with so many people on their perspective about Jackie Robinson. That's that was awesome. That's a moment you'll never forget. What about you? Uh, I, I don't know what it feels like to be Edwin Diaz, but for one night, I kind of felt what it felt like to come into the trumpets. Coming in the MLB tonight, coming into the studio, and the trumpets were playing, and it just felt to me like. Should we watch that again? Yeah. Let's watch. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 was that made my night. And Harold was just on well, cue well, with the got, trumpet. Yeah, he took a right. couple of lessons before. Oh, he did. He brilliant. <laughs> Our closer has arrived. <laughs> 
That was so much fun. My moment of the year oh, to man. me, it, it, it changed the All Star game completely. Uh, I lost my mind for this watching Alec Manoa on the mound in the All Star oh, game. It's amazing. With an IFB and a microphone. Yeah. And him and John Smoltz, John Smoltz in the booth, was calling pitches for Alec Manoa to throw. Watch. You're going to strike out the side in the All Star game? What do you want me to do it on, though? John? John, what do you want? Back foot slider, down and low. Oh, you're sexy. Here we go. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I well, blame Smoltz. Slider. My bad. <laughs> That's on Smoltz. It was back foot. I mean, you executed it. Ah. John, what do you got for him on one two? Make this slider look like a strike on the outside corner and make it disappear off the corner. I'm thinking the slider too, but I think if I execute a good heater up. Yeah. If you've seen the sinker twice, something that stays true. Might throw him off a little bit. I think we're gonna go with that. Let's see what Curry calls. Right down the middle, but we'll take it. Three punches. <laughs> Let's go! Alec, congratulations. Woo! Thank you for doing this. Yeah, you're the best, man. This, I'm, uh, so, I, that to awesome. me, and I, I thanked Alec Manoa for wearing that. It took fans inside the game like we had never yeah. been before. Yeah, it was nice. so great. All right, aside from Judge and Pujols and the historic achievements of this year for them, Harold, what will the 2022 season be remembered for? Well, it's got a lot, but I love the young players. That, you know, our game's so much younger, and I think we got three Hall of Famers. I know it's hard to say your rookie year going to be in the Hall of Fame. But Julio Rodriguez, his contract's going to allow him that opportunity. But the talent is there. I think we're seeing a star that's born. Adley Rutschman's going to be an all-star starting next year. I, I, there's no doubt about it. And then Bobby Wood Jr. All the goods and the ingredients are in all three of these players. I think 15 years from now, 20 years from now, we'll be talking about how great they are. It, to me, it's Shohei Otani. The game has never, and I'm going back to the Babe Ruth days, have never seen the talent like this guy has. On the mound, ERA under three. Punching out the world. He is a legitimate ace starter, and he is a legitimate middle of the order bat. He hits for power. He can run. He does everything. He's the man. We are saying farewell to three Hall of Fame managers, in my opinion. Now, Tony's already in, but I think Joe Girardi and Joe Madden have a legitimate shot at it being enshrined in the Cooperstown someday. Third Yankee fans will roll their eyes at that. Joe Girardi's record was ridiculous. Nothing but a winner. Ran into some trouble with the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, but to see three managers at that level all walk away and they may not ever manage again, I'm going to remember that year for those three guys. Yeah, unfortunately, we have this each and every year. We lose signature faces of our sport. Yeah. Uh, people that passed away in 2022, who do you look back fondly on? Well, in this sport, we all get to know those men yeah. you know, we, or, the, or women, get a chance to be around them all. So... It's hard to just select one, but one that had a major impact on me was Maury Wills. And seeing Maury pass away, the word that he did a few weeks back, uh, being a switch hitter, a guy he taught how to bunt. When I first came to the Mariner organization, Maury Wills was the manager, and he would go down and grab all the guys that could run. You work with Maury. And I got the chance to know him from 82 on for the rest of my career. Maury was always there for me, so I miss him. Yeah, for me, it's Dwight Smith. I had a plan, chance to play with Dwight in Chicago. Brought light to every room that he was in. Loved to sing. Sang the national anthem a few times when he was with a member of the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Always had a smile on his face. He's going to be really missed. And he was great at the anthem. Here's, here's a bit of Dwight Smith singing the national anthem. So I played with Smitty in Anaheim with the Angels, and he used to think he was Luther Vandross. <laughs> I'm telling you, he would sing through the clubhouse, and he'd say, what song you want? He was the best, man. Going to miss him dearly. Well, as a broadcaster that gets to cover the sport of baseball, you, you can't think of the, you know, the Mount Rushmore of broadcasters without starting with Vin Scully. And the late Vin Scully was a national treasure. Dodger fans take him in as their own, and they should, but all of America got to enjoy the greatest voice, the greatest personality, the greatest love for this game. 
He was revered, adored, and we think about Vin to this day. And rightfully so. I mean, every time I went to Dodger Stadium, I'd go into the, to the booth and he'd give you time. I'd mm -hmm. sit down, talk to him, and he was just, what you heard on the airwaves is what Vin was like. Just a gentleman. He was amazing. He and was. Amazing. Great storyteller.